Stick around after the clinic to see how the Atlantic Great Western and Great Western Malting team up to bring you Miller Beer. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Model Railroad Back Shop. I'm your host, Roger Kajawa. Today I'm going to show you how to add a keep alive to a Bowser sound locomotive. If you're not familiar with keep lives, there's a couple different names, but TCS I think was the, one of the first ones that came out with these. They provide you with maybe 10, minute, 10 seconds to maybe 20 seconds of power if the uh, engine runs over some dirty track or you have dirty wheels or maybe the frog are not powered on your switches. This is great with sound locomotives because you don't have that cutting out of the sound or the locomotive restarting when they uh, you know, hit a dead spot. So the Keep Alive is uh, some really small, they call them super capacitors, and TCS makes these in a variety of different sizes. This one's in a cube. They also make a long stretch. Uh, there's a couple different uh, manufacturers now that make these in different configurations. Uh, you can make these yourself, but I really don't take the time. It's just as easier for me to buy it. Time is the essence in my factor, not uh, it's not so much cost. So uh, I'll show you what this, how this goes together. And uh, we'll get started by taking this locomotive apart. So first step I like to have is something to put my parts in. Um, after you've crawled around on the floor looking for things, uh, I found it much easier just to have a box to uh, keep everything in so you don't lose it. These come apart pretty easy. Uh, it's basically you just take the couplers off. Sometimes you have to get in there and do just a tad of prying to pull it out. And be gentle taking these off because sometimes the wires are a little short. What's nice about these Bowsers is they have plug-ins get your fingers on these you could separate the shell so it doesn't get damaged while you're working on this so the sound decoder is mounted to the motherboard and it just you can see right here it just pins it just pulls right out we'll set that aside this is what we want to get to is these pins right here. So before we get to that and put the decoder in, we've got to have a place to put this. Now this shell is pretty tight. I looked at using a smaller speaker. This is the speaker. I looked at using a smaller speaker and mounting it here with the cube speaker up here but it's still, the distance from the top of this will not fit in here. There's, it's too tall. So I looked at an alternate place. Um, one other place, I don't like to take the interior out of the locomotive because on this one it's painted green and it looks pretty cool. You can see it through the window. Um, so I thought, what else can I do? I thought maybe this spot but it's still too high to fit up in there. So I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of weight and I'm going to make a cut on this weight like this and then the same on this other side. I get a hacksaw out and I'm going to take that out. But first I'm going to take the trucks out of this kind of disassemble it so that I don't get any metal filings in there. Before we make our cut, I want to get this truck off of here so we can get metal filings in here. To do that, there's a little clip in here. Kind of have to get in on both sides. Pry this clip loose. It holds the truck on. Here's the truck clip. 
Here's the worm gear and the coupling that goes into the flywheel. Not sure, I guess you can see the flywheel in there. That coupling goes in there. So we're going to take those off and set those back in the box with everything else. Now, this one also has a clip on here, a plug. Gently pull the plug out. There we go. So now we're ready to make our cuts. I'm going to take some masking tape, mask this all off so I don't get any metal filings in there. That way I don't have to take the whole thing apart to make my cuts. So let me get some masking tape and we'll mask that off. Okay, I got some masking tape. I just found this piece of glass. I'm not sure where it was out of, but uh, I scavenged onto it, put some tape around the edges to make it a little safer to handle. And, and all I do is just cut some random rectangles on this masking tape. I don't have any certain size. It's going to be a lot of overlap, so it doesn't make any difference. And I'll just start picking up these rectangles and start covering up what I don't want any of the metal filings to get in. I won't show you the whole process here because this might take about 20 minutes. So I'll be right back. Yeah, we're back. Um, didn't quite take 20 minutes. Probably took about 12 minutes, 15. I got everything masked off, so no metal filings can get anywhere that I don't want them to go. Um, this is where we're going to cut again. We're going to cut this little piece off here and up on both sides. And I'm just going to use a regular hacksaw. And I'm going to put this in my vise. So I'll be right back. I'm back from the vise. And I cut the sections off in here. These are the two pieces that I took off to allow room for the keep alive. Reassembling this is very straightforward. Get the truck in there, make sure the pin fits into the truck from the frame. Then you want to take your coupling and the gear I want to slide it in there, make sure it's all the way into the flywheel. And then we're going to make sure that these bearings fit down into the worm gear housing the way they're supposed to. And then uh, if you can see it here, now that I have that in there, I'm going to turn the flywheel with this tweezers and it's turning the gear and making the truck move. So we know everything's set right. So I'm going to put the clip on here. Make sure it swivels. Make sure the wires aren't pinched. Everything looks good in there. Okay, so I'm not going to hook this up right now because I need to solder this Keep Alive in there and these would be just in the way. Now where I have to solder, according to the diagram, is to the pins right here that I marked with a little Sharpie. This is a diagram I made off of uh, 
Marcus Amon. He has a web page, and I'll leave a link on the uh, in the notes for it. This is the diagram for the pins. This blank pin down here. It's cut off. That's your index pin, and that matches up with the diagram. So 22 is at the top right, and we count down 2, so that would be 20, the negative, and then the next one would be 16, would be the positive. So I mark those with the Sharpie, I'm going to get my soldering iron out and solder this, keep alive to those to make sure I got the polarity right according to his diagram. So I'll be right back. Well, I got that soldered on there. I have a very fine pointed soldering iron that I use. The trick I was always taught to solder was to get some flux and use the rosin flux, never use the acid flux. I put a little flux on those connectors and put a little solder on each one. And then I put flux and solder on the wires Got solder on both of them, and then soldered actually the solder on the wire to the solder on the terminal. So you're putting solder to solder. Makes a really quick connection. It doesn't heat anything up instead of trying to do that all in one process of putting the wire on there and the solder. Another thing, it keeps it from flowing. You don't want any of these other connections touching. So I got that soldered on there. It's firm. Uh, I'm going to take a piece of electrical tape that I cut and mount this Keep Alive. I'm just going to use this tape to hold it in place. It doesn't have to be a strong connection because it's just sitting there. This is the power lead from the truck. We'll reconnect that now that and that only goes in one way. So I'll get these wires out of the way. And I'll get the decoder. Now this decoder has an index on it also, so it only goes one way. You have to be gentle with this. Make sure everything's lined up and go straight down, push it down. It's back in where it's supposed to be. So we're in pretty good shape here. Next step, we'll give it a little test run here. Let me get my stuff out of the way for our test run. These keep lives usually take about oh, maybe a minute, minute and a half or so to fully charge up. And uh, then they'll give you enough time to get over a dead spot. That's a pretty big dead spot, but uh, we'll show you how nice this works. I turned the sound off, but I'll give you a test run here without the sound and then with the sound.
you can see what an advantage that's going to be when you're switching. You hit a frog that's not insulated, pay or switch points that aren't all the way over. Uh, you don't lose any of the sound. Your engine keeps pulling. There's no false uncouplings. So let me button this up and I'll take you over to the layout and we'll show you where this guy switches. I like to uh, manage my wires. Not, I don't like a lot of loose stuff hanging around. So I'm going to take a piece of tape, kind of hold these wires down so they don't get fouled up as I put the shell on. Make sure there's still enough motion in your trucks so they aren't binding. We'll take our plug that controls the lights in the shell, plug that back in. It only goes one way. And we'll gently slide this up in there making sure I like to look on both sides, making sure no wires are binding. Okay, it fits flush all over, looks good. So next step is to put the couplers on. The couplers hold the body the chassis. I was fighting a glad hand on that one. There we go. All ready to go. So, take you over to Sussex, Wisconsin, where this uh, locomotive works on my railroad, and we'll show you how, uh, how it runs. Welcome to Sussex, Wisconsin. This is a town on my Atlantic Great Western, west of Milwaukee. Sussex is the home of the Great Western malting plant. The Atlantic and Great Western has just dropped off a load of hopper cars uh, full of barley and they picked up their empties and are heading north. So we'll watch this go by and then I'll uh, give you a little tour of the plant. The Great Western Malting Plant in Sussex, Wisconsin, served by the Lanark Great Western, has their own switcher. That's the one we were working on the workbench. The AGW brings the barley in, which is unloaded into the shed down here on the left. It goes into those processing and storage buildings and then is conveyed across the tracks to these backdrop buildings. This is where the malting takes place. When they get done with the malting, they ship it underground to this loading facility. And the Great Western 
malting loads it into their own covered hoppers and gets sent to Miller Brewing in Milwaukee. A byproduct of the malting process is liquid feed and it gets loaded out into this building into tank cars that go to another industry on my layout. Great Western Malting's Baldwin that they bought. They got it used from the original Norfolk Southern Short Line Railroad. They've not gotten around to painting it yet. They just put their initials on it. Now the switcher has to stay in the plant. They can't go out on the AGW siding or main line which makes switching interesting. There's a certain amount of room, they have a run around and some siding, but they have to move a lot of cars in small cuts of five or six, maybe seven. You can see how important the keep alive is when you're switching all these slow movements over a lot of switches. Now some of the newer locomotives actually have plugs on them where you can plug those keep alives right into them. Now he'll shove down into this shed, get the last car in there, and then as they empty the cars, they'll use a car puller, which is kind of like a winch. They'll just winch the car farther down and unload the next car. When they're all done, then the locomotive will come back, grab the whole string, and get another string of loads in there for them to empty.
The other job the locomotive has to do is switch out the loaded malt cars. Quite a bit to do here for this railroad's going to keep me busy for a long time. A lot of scenery work to do, jumper wires to put in, missing ties, but it's an enjoyable process. I like to switch my industries, get a real feel for how they're running, and then if I have to make any changes in the track, I will. A lot of times what's on paper doesn't work out in real life. Now later this afternoon, Atlantic Great Western Local will come on from Milwaukee. He'll pick up the loaded malt cars. He'll drop off empties and the process will reverse the next morning. Well, thanks for watching my videos. Hope you've enjoyed this. Maybe give you a little insight as to uh, operations of my railroad. And, I mean, it's a dream to switch with these locomotives now where you don't have to worry about them stalling on points or stalling on frogs or dirty track or maybe dirty wheels. It's not a cure-all. I mean, you do have to keep your track somewhat clean and, you know, keep your wheels clean, but it makes a world of difference, as you can see. There's no stuttering. Sound doesn't cut out. I would advise you it's worth the uh, 15 to 20 bucks to invest in some keep alive. So thanks again for watching and uh, check out my other videos. Check out my uh, Lantern Greg Western on Facebook. And I have some uh, videos up on Model Railroad Back Shop on Facebook also. And I'm also on YouTube. So check me out on YouTube at Model Railroad Back Shop. Thanks guys. See you later.
Check out Marcus's webpage for more information on the locomotive stay alive or keep alive. He has almost all the applications that you would need for your decoder.